there and signed off on the POs and sent it to Caddo, that, that's where that material went. That material Rick, went all the way around it. They had, he got it ready to do all, he was going to, he was going to all and chip the whole thing. So he put 560 ton and three quarter chip on that project a year before that? Yes, yeah, he was going to do it that year. Then after he got beat, he didn't do it. What did he do with the material? He put it on that road. It wasn't the gravel. on that road. I've lived out there this whole time and it wasn't going to use it on that road. There was gravel on it and I didn't put it on there. Well, I mean, what I was I looking at, according to them, what they showed me, that they said nothing ever was done on that road and and whenever the P.O.s was issued, everybody signed off on that P.O. and said it went to that project. So, just by what I saw, that was fraud. I mean, you can't sign off and say that you bought material and put it on that road and then not do it. Now you say fraud. The thing I done. 99 percent, excuse me, Mark, I'm sorry. But 99 percent of the time we do an oil chip job, Rick, we stockpile the gravel and get as close to the job as we can, you know, because I understand the that. So when it, any of the three of the commissioners buy gravel and we sign off on that PO, <clears throat> it's stockpiled. I mean, do, I don't go out there and police them and make sure which road they put it on. I mean, they tell me they're going to put it on 1180 and they stockpile the rock. I understand that, you but, know. but then but then when y'all sign POs, it says specifically what job it went to, whether it's that job or, or whatever kind of material it should be. Shouldn't it go to whatever the PO says it's for? Correct. And we signed the PO 90% of the time before the job is started because, you know, like, you're working on roads and you might haul 10 loads of gravel today and put in a stockpile. Next week you might haul 20. And then, you know, you sign those POs and it might be a, it might be 20, 30 days of stockpiling periodically before you actually pull and chip that road. I understand that, but that 560 tons that they have talked about was a year before Marvin did his work on the wrong road. And they're saying they never got that gravel. We got a few tin horns fixed up, you know, maybe that, but uh, that's about well, it. All, all I know is his, hand, his hands told me that they fixed the road up. I don't know, Mitch, I never talked to Mitch after he, after he was going to have business. His hand told me that they got the road fixed to do. Yeah, and I wasn't there, I don't know about all I know. Well, I, I wasn't, I wasn't there either, so I don't know either, but I know they, they said they got the road ready to oil and chip all the way around. Well, my concern is it says right on there that if there if it doesn't go on that particular road or whatever, that's defrauding kiddo. I mean, if you see that there's a problem, there's a clause in there that says that they need to be notified or it needs to be changed if there's a change in, I guess, the description or what's done to the road or whatever. There's a clause in there that says that it can terminate it if it's not... I mean, that's my concern. If it's being put on the wrong road, we could get messed up and not get Cato funding because it's not going on the proper road. I mean... Well, I've talked to him about it. Okay, said well, that, 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 that's said, my concern. I don't well, want us to lose... He said that we would that would be on there for the next, my right. next project to be put on that road. Well, I just don't want us to get messed up as a county to not be able to get this kind of funding by accidentally getting on the wrong road and then coming back and saying, hey, you say you've done this road and somebody drives out there and it's not done. Okay, and this was from July 1, 2011 through June. That's where it extended the first page. It extended they from 11 to 13. Yeah, to December of 13, yes. Because mm -hmm. the first one, if you look on the first page, the second page, it shows mm -hmm. that it was to that May. So yeah. May 13. Mm -hmm. I mean, Steve, we have to send everything in that, you know, that, that's done. We have to send it in to Steve, which is our head on the guy. Uh, so at this time, that Steve, that you're talking about, thought that stuff got used on 11 That's what you're telling me. No, you need to ask more than that. Well, I, I, well I, this I mean, where, I mean, this is your signature. <coughs> this was sent in, and it says South Road Road Because that's what... I guess. Right, and this number is on this refund, which is K6030, which says it's for East 1180 South Perry Loop. So they're under the impression, and everything has these that grant number on it, they're under the impression that all of this stuff went to 1180. 
And yeah. that says yeah. that I, have, that I have told I have told him that. Yeah. I have well, told him that. It, I mean, like, Iron's not out there. <coughs> not, right, she's not. I know right, right, right. right. Well, well, I'm right. just saying that that's the way it was filled out and sent into them. So I they're in called him and, and straight to that with him and told him what, what happened. When? <coughs> huh? When? When did I call him? Yeah. About three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, whenever Mr. Jones came. But up at this, until this time, they thought it went on 11 8. Yep. Yeah. Because I made a mistake, but he said that wasn't the first. He said there's been more than one made on it that the guy right. wrong. Way. But what you, when you went in office, you remember me coming and telling you there was money sitting there for 1180. Oh yeah, just go get it, put it on 1180. So why did you use it on well, 1180? I, I did. I, I that's been a while back. I, I don't remember because I, I've got several roads done, and every one of them went on the road that's supposed to go with that one. I just went in office. Yeah, and the money, it, it ran out in July after you took office, but you extended it to December, yeah, 4 11 I, I put it on wrong. I apologize for it, but it's going to get to care of. Does anybody else have anything? All right. <clears throat> this time, item number six, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the commission's minutes from last week. Uh, um, Get a second. I'll say. Somebody here from the Inquirer Fire Department? No. Uh, Derek was, he's, he said he could be here, but I thought he was out to be, but he didn't. He had something to do. So who's going to? Well, I've got the <coughs> spread for the building. be changed or you need to get a hold of it here.
you explain the pattern? Yeah, we're, uh, Lake Wire Fire Department is wanting to extend their building so they can park some of their fire trucks in there. And they want to, they want to go out for bids to get the building built. So yeah, that's just a proposition to sit out for bids for the fire. This is fire. Uh, basically the specs, <coughs> the specs. Okay. of the Lake Wire Fire Department they're wanting to add on to. That's, they have an existing building and mm -hmm. it shows here what they're, what they're wanting to add on to. And right now they're just asking us to go, let them go out for bids. And when the bids get accepted, then you can make the final determination. Thank you. All right. Somebody want to make a motion on that, going out for bids? No, I'll make a motion. I'll second. I'll take it then. Any motions for item number nine? <coughs> motion made for Mark and Mark and Mark and Mark and We have a lot of stuff, and most of it's old. <laughs> uh, we have boxes of old telephone before we went to the phone system we're on now. These telephones do not work on the phone systems that the county's on now. We have boxes of um, old cell phones that they used the track phones back in the day. Um, those are no longer used or in process that all the precinct officials said. <coughs> So um, we have those from all the precincts and, and then the phones. And then we have some other things, um, <coughs> old fax machines, um, printers. I believe all the copiers are actually state purchased, so they'll be state funded property um, that we'll have to go through again. But those, those items that I have mentioned, as well as the old ballot boxes. We use half of one jail cell for our storage for ballots. They have to be kept under lock and key. And the jail cell is currently about half, up in the old jail, about half of the cell is being used to store the old metal ballot boxes. We are out of room. We have to have some place to store, it's required that we have to have some place to store the ballots. Um, <clears throat> these old metal ballot boxes are the type that when you would fill out your ballot, you pop it down in a little opening in the, the lid of the metal box. Some of you may remember those. I don't. <laughs> but anyway, those are aluminum, I've been told, and that there may be some value in selling those <clears throat> rather than just junking them. 
not junk. I don't want to junk anything, take that back, because it was a talk with the auditor the other day. He said the term junk would mean that we have to do something with it later. We can't actually get rid of it if we use the term junk. So we need disposal. And that would be we could take those items to the trash dumpster uh, out there and they would write us a receipt. And we could then write that off that it's gone when they write a receipt out there for those things. Um, I don't think that any of the funds would be any value that they may if you want to consider selling them or whatever. Those metal boxes, I understand there may be some value there. I don't care. I've heard, um, you know, uh, one person suggested that we put those on an online yard sale site and do bidding type thing on it that we might, or something like eBay or something that you might get a little more money out of those, and that that might be something that was possible. I don't know, but we need the room, we need to get rid of that stuff, we just need some direction on what to do there. All the officers up there, they just fell out of the spot. And then the last say the stuff that belongs to the state, you need to get with them. But as far as anything county, I mean, <coughs> it all has to be there's a form to fill out <coughs> saying what describing what you're disposing of. You just have to fill them out and bring them to us. Put it back on the agenda and we'll look at it. Is there any particular way that you would prefer that we dispose of them? Whether we those boxes would well, you can sell them or pack them for straight and get bids from from Yaffe and, and uh, one. But if you're going to do that, so you want what? if you do that, that's you wouldn't be filling out that paperwork because you'd be selling it, and that you'd have to go out for bids. So that's still considered a means of disposal. They tell me there's three columns yeah, on three disposal. Columns. Ones for yeah. So that's is sad. there a preference on how I need to go about that? We got one. Now, Paul, would that be similar to maybe whenever the county has an equipment? It would be similar. It would be similar to that, but I mean, I don't care if, you know, we can take bids on scrap iron, but I mean, I don't, scrap iron brings $75 a ton a box, what weighs five pounds. I mean, I don't know if it would pay the gas to take them up there. Did you say they were lumber and lumber? Mm -hmm. be, a little, be a little more but, uh, but like I said somebody had mentioned to me and, and I know <coughs> the city of Muskogee I believe that the city of Muskogee several years ago sold some trash dumpsters online um, and that was I think it was the city of Muskogee that was my question is is it something that we could do online and maybe get you know somebody said the antiquers may even be interested in you know people that have these little antique stores and think that those might be Something that's That'd be the way they sell them to the scrap for that, that value. So that's fine, man. I mean, I, if you want to go out for bids to sell them, we'll go out for bids to sell them. Take bids on them. Is online bids okay? I let it check the doctor. I've never done an online bid. I'm sure it is because when I have, like Rock said, when they have the equipment sale and, and, uh, Elk City and McAllister, they I know they do online bidding there. So I'm I'm sure it'd be legal because they do it at the equipment sales. Okay. So I don't know why it wouldn't be legal there. Well number ten. No action taken, just discussed. All right, Miss Edwards, you hear about our grants. Uh yes, there is on June twenty third the COPS hiring grant through the U.S. Department of Justice is due. What this will do is it will hire a, to increase your force, one officer. And Question it'll, right quick. Yes. You said COPS. Uh, is that applying to our sheriff's office or is that? Sheriff's offices are eligible to okay. apply for it. That's the name of the grant is okay. COPS hiring grant. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Good. Uh, and I have gotten it for another sheriff's department. Okay, I'm just checking. And uh, it pays for 75% of the salary and benefits for three years for an additional officer. They wish for you to retain that officer a fourth year on your dime. And all. Now, if you wind up being short-handed, because most of my smaller towns and counties have a problem, everybody's afraid that we can't find officers, we're always running short-handed, what are they going to do to us? 
we need to keep real good records in that fourth year that you're actively advertising and taking applications. That way, if you're shorthanded, they can't say you haven't retained the number of officers, if that makes any sense. Um, the 25%, I also can apply for a reduction on the match amount, and I've successfully done that, but I can't guarantee that would happen. It's at their discretion. Uh, it is a reimbursement grant, so you would pay the officer and then get reimbursed. Uh, the first month or two, I try to go ahead and run, like the, after the first month, I try to run, run it through. After that, I do the pay request and quarterly reports all at the same time quarterly to where you get reimbursed for it. Um, if you do a school resource officer, a veteran 